Today, uh, my guest uh, is Gonzalo Galindo. Uh, Gonzalo is the head uh, of uh, Semex Ventures. Semex uh, is a uh, multinational company uh, headquartered in uh, Mexico um, and focus on uh, in the construction industry. That is an industry that uh, has been uh, mentioned by many. That is one uh, probably with the, the lowest degree of innovation. That is one of the things that typically has been uh, has been told, talking about construction. So today with Gonzalo, we will have the opportunity to to understand how innovation can be brought into the construction industry, how construct tech, prop tech, and all these new technology that might be applied to this big area might might really have an impact. And specifically, we want to to deep dive the model that Semex to Semex Venture has been uh, implemented over the past five years. So Gonzalo, welcome. Thank you, Alberto, and thank you for having me today and, and, and willing to, to share some experiences with the crowd. That is something that we'll definitely benefit from. First of all, congratulations are in order. Uh, Semex Ventures has been recognized uh, as part of the Corporate Startup Stars Awards 2021 among the Open Innovation Challengers. So well done, and I think this is uh, a small sign of appreciation for the work that uh, some corporates are really doing uh, in the area that is very, very spoken, but most of the time is not so conductive results of startup corporate collaboration. So congratulations, Gonzalo, thank, and congratulations thank, to Thank Semex. you very much. Thank you very much. We will be very proud to, to receive this award. Perfect. So first of all, probably it might be good to, to provide a couple of data points about Semex as a company, in terms of at least our audience can understand the size of the company, the areas of operation, uh, if you can probably just uh, highlight a couple sure. of data points. Sure. Well, Semex is a well company, but we headquartered in Mexico. Uh, we have been in, in town, we have been in this world about 110 years already, uh, since 1615 years, actually. Uh, with main uh, businesses in cement, red mix, and aggregates, also, although we still have some other businesses in, in, in specific countries like uh, precast materials, asphalt, and some other building materials as well. Uh, it's a $13.5 billion company with operations in 50 countries around the world, uh, 40,000 employees, uh, and, uh, and has been in the New York Stock Exchange and the Mexican Bolsa trading for the last uh, 20, 30 years. No? Perfect. This is very helpful. And uh, let's focus on the innovation side. Uh, so Semex Venture, as far as I can remember, it has been uh, launched uh, five, six years ago, if I'm not wrong. And uh, I think there are some models. Again, uh, open innovation is a, is a topic that is quite recent for many corporates. And while there are different ways of approaching this topic, there are certain corporates that are creating an open innovation unit, while other corporates are creating a, a corporate venture capital unit that initially is in charge of leading and steering the innovation efforts inside the company. Uh, as far as I know, in Semex, this has been the second one has been the process has been followed, and maybe good probably if you can go back in time and explain how this. Uh, innovation sure. uh, effort started in Semex, uh, what has been the approach, the goals? I think that's been super useful. Sure. Um, well, uh, as you mentioned, about uh, five years ago, we, we decided to launch Semex Ventures with a, probably with the only conviction that we were fairly clueless about what we were doing. No? But, but in, any, in any case, we thought it was relevant. Since the early days, uh, we wanted to provide Semex Ventures a lot of strategic com content for the company for the following reasons. We are part of the building materials industry, and the building materials industry is very tangential to the whole construction world. 
Uh, we are just a part of a whole value chain of construction. No? And, and many decisions are taking place on a daily basis on a construction project in which building materials not necessarily participate. So in a sense, we were feeling a little bit um, vulnerable uh, to that uh, potential level of destruction in an industry that we knew that in spite of the fact the low levels of neonation uh, will be eventually uh, be uh, disrupted as any other. No? So, so we decided to, to open this uh, to have uh, to, 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 to comply with a couple of objectives. Number one is have somebody continuously checking what is happening outside, uh, what are the trends, the technologies, uh, how this industry is changing and so on. Uh, number two is help CEMEX digest that and actually think strategically about these changes. Um, and, uh, and based on those changes, uh, start uh, prospecting, investing, and, and, and trying uh, to bring in innovation to actually achieve those strategic objectives. No? So we never invest uh, just for the sake of the venture capital purpose. We also invest in something which has some sort of strategic sense for CEMEX. Sometimes we don't even invest for operational improvement, although we sometimes help them to sell CEMEX to find solutions which help in operational point of view. But our aim is really help CEMEX bring innovation in achieving strategic objectives mostly. Uh, just uh, some sort of minor technicality, at least to, to clear off the table. I think Semex uh, Venture is um, is investing off balance, right? We're, we're actually investing for the balance sheet directly yes, right now. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. technically speaking, you're not that, that might change next year because we are we're having plans to to open that, but 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 so far we're investing for the balance sheet. Okay, perfectly. Is uh, using a sort of. Um, um that's that's the model that you're using which is the size of the investment uh in terms of which is the capital being allocated how many it, portfolio it, it companies all depends. it all depends uh because as we have been evolving also our i would say the, the sophistication of the things we're starting to do are starting to change and, and some of them require more money and also the, the verticals in which we're investing also are a little bit wider no we, we invest all the way from digital solutions to to carbon decarbonization solutions. No? So those are completely different dynamics. No? Yes. On average, we tend to invest on early stage, uh, not necessarily seed, not necessarily aid, something in between. Usually, and depending on also where we, if you are talking about the US, it's one amount. If you're talking Europe or, or yes. Latin America, something else. No, I would say on average, we invest about a million, million and a half per, per event. Uh, Although we have been doing investments of three, three and a half millions all the way down to 200 million, 200,000. No, I mean, so yes. it's, it's, it's a little bit diverse. This is the ballpark range, yes. Yes. And uh, how many investments you typically do per year? Uh, we usually do about three new ones plus mm. a couple of follow ons. Yes. So between five and six. This year has been a little bit more hectic. We, we have done close to four new ones plus three follow-up so it's a little bit a little bit it, it's increasing as, as we move on no i mean the portfolio is growing you need to take care of certain things no you have a 16 company your portfolio if i'm not sure currently 16 and, and hopefully 18 by by early 2022 so some some definitely some good dynamics and uh, you another technical question are you leading leading investors co-lead participate we, we go case by case mm -hmm. uh, we have less in some cases uh, we feel more comfortable in fol following, but, but if we have, to, we have to leave, we leave. Okay, perfect. And um, another uh, question is, when you co-invest, you co-invest with uh, financial or with strategic investors? Uh, usually both. Um, we, we always try to invest with somebody else at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are case by case we we go and, and decide no i mean in, yes. in each every one of those cases there has been usually a financial one uh, in a couple of cases there has been another an, another strategic no uh, it's 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 not defined it's it's case by case we typically use this framework uh, if you can uh, get this done uh, um to, to represent a multiple uh, initiative that uh, typically your corporates might adopt uh, while uh, engaging with startup. You can see from uh, left to right, there are some mm -hmm. 
initiative mostly with the goal of exploration that typically is the presence in uh, the most um, uh, relevant uh, tech clusters in the world what we call innovation outputs innovation antennas then there are initiatives where you try to uh, extract ideas from your own employees what is technically called entrepreneurship that is the world of engaging with early stage startups that can pass through in the past was the corporate accelerators nowadays the venture builder and startup studio are on the rise uh, or startup competition uh, this is something you are pretty strong about uh, is another yeah. model of interaction then there is the venture client meaning is the goal is to identify solutions that are ready to to be deployed by the business unit through partnership procurement uh, commercial agreement up to investments either through off balance sheet or cvc fund and sometimes eventually acquisition so it might be good probably to just to to have a reference to this framework also to to understand how uh, Semex is engaging at uh, different level with startups. As we already discussed about the investment piece, that is, uh, I think your ball, your your stronghold is the part actually that has been probably the, the the unit that is leading all the innovation effort inside the company. It will also be good to understand also which other areas are you guys um, uh, working on and how do how to. Sure. Well, if, if, if I see this framework, um, probably we have done almost 95% of that, not necessarily in that order, but, yes. but almost 95% we tried. Uh, cool. Certainly the, the, the inside piece, they really having a, a clear understanding of trends and, and technologies of what is happening is one very relevant thing of, of, of what we do in, in, in some Ventures. Uh, we do also, uh, based on that, we define our, our investment uh, priorities, which basically they have to do with um, things related to green construction, for example, things like decarbonization, sustainable materials, circular economy is very high in our agenda. We also work very hard in um, uh, supply chain issues, construction supply issues. Usually the supply chain is one of the major problems in the construction world. And, yeah. and we are part of the supply chain. I mean, we have thousands of trucks in the streets every day delivering products and materials. Uh, we also take care about uh, productivity in the construction world, especially uh, thinking about uh, uh, just productivity within the boundaries of what is construction today, but also thinking about new construction processes and so on. And last but not least, uh, also, what's the future of construction? No, for things like three D printing, advanced building materials, new things. No, so th those are the areas in which we can uh, focus our 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 uh, our efforts. No, uh, how we end up investing in that one? Uh, any single part of what you mentioned, I think, has been part of our of our doing. Uh, I would say uh, venture capital investing in startups has been the most steady one since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, we also have a, a full as, as as mentioned we have already sixteen startups and so on. Since the beginning we have uh, uh, we control as well from from Semex Ventures what we call a, a smart innovation, which is our internal Semex innovation process, no? which is a process which uh, try to engage uh, the vast majority of Semex employees. Uh, into into a cultural mindset of thinking about innovation. No? Not necessarily we're expecting. Uh, shots to the moon from from that process but sometimes mm -hmm. we have on a yearly basis 10 growth projects which we say damn this is something that's worth to pursue that to develop and so on some of those projects uh, can be executed internally with internal capabilities but some others uh, we have uh, we look into the entrepreneurship place no we, we have tried certain models mm -hmm. to actually launch we have actually incubated three companies by ourselves uh, not necessarily the most successful model, really uh, in, um, uh, launching a startup within a large corporation is painful. Uh, it's so very we painful, think in that yes. model as we speak. No, but we have three companies which are invoicing and, and, and doing things which are quite unique no, for, for certain markets. And, and also, uh, we do a lot of effort in sourcing and having a steady and... and, and and, and and meaningful pipeline of, of, of opportunities. We we have what we call the construction startup competition, which yes. we started five years ago. Uh, yes, it's basically it's an experiment, but it has been growing and today is probably the largest startup competition within construction world. 
Uh, we have that competition today jointly with uh, six, seven partners already. Yeah. Uh, we source close to 600 startups every year. Uh, and that, that provides us a very steady flow of, of opportunities. No? And, and also um, what we do is it's not necessarily the M&A, but we also tried some joint ventures for certain technologies that we know that will be sooner or later being uh, established technologies in the construction world which will call for CEMEX to provide new uh, products and services. And probably we don't have that skill set today. So we partner with people to actually test and develop those new skills. Uh, but in some other cases, for example, in green construction, decarbonation and so on, uh, we find that technologies requires as well a lot of collaboration between corporates like us and the entrepreneurs who actually uh, developing those technologies, no? Uh, carbon capture, carbon usage technology tend to be very expensive and the lead times of development tend to be larger than any, substantially larger than any digital solution, no? So really that partnership, that collaboration between startup and, and, and us is, is very meaningful uh, in terms of R&D, in terms of development of the technology, piloting at industrial base and so on. So those type of investments are completely different. We, they end up being corporate venture investments. We end up investing in those startups like any other, but they are related to our wider collaboration agreement on how we're going to uh, help each other develop those, those technologies. No? Got it. Got it. Now, I think it might be good to, to highlight uh, the, the startup competition. That is something that is one of the trade, but of Semex, actually, you're not, you're not alone in these efforts. As mentioned, there are some other large corporates that are involved, like Ferrovial, uh, Vinci, uh, Sengoban, uh, GS from Korea, and some others. And so can you explain how it works? What is the value proposition for, for startups attending? What are sure. the, the rules? Uh, what are the expectations? Uh, how does it work? And some, some results that come out, out of that. Yes. Um, well, it's, it's an invitation open for any startup which basically has a solution in one of the four or five areas of investments that we define, no? uh, green construction, supply chain, uh, productivity, and so on. No? Um, the, the process, basically, we usually open the, the, the competition, give or take February, March every year. Mm -hmm. And it's open for submittals until give or take June, July. And from there on is a matter of uh, prioritizing and reviewing all sorts of startups uh, first, uh, first with a small team and then in, in an open team with, with all our partners. No, uh, We usually have our finals, actually it happened just last week, um, mm. and we try to make the finals uh, in an event which is hopefully attended by a lot of investors because that's what they those guys are looking on so one of the benefits is you will be connected to a lot of investors uh, from the corporate venture world uh, and from the venture capital world uh, also in the process uh, you will have a lot of interactions with uh, not only us but six or seven other co uh, corporates which are uh, interested in the solutions that you are proposing no? in the early days when we were only alone uh, we noticed that a couple of things happened. I mean, at the end of the day, we received uh, hundreds, 200 startups in, in that event. And we were just really interested as Semex Ventures in probably 50, 60. You know? So we felt it was unfair to the other 140, which we felt some of them were very good as well. No, That's why we thought probably we should open this to other people with different requirements uh, within the construction world. And that's why we actually invite, invited some partners like Ferrovial, Vinci, Sangoban, Hilti, and, and the likes to actually help us be a, a much more, um, a much more uh, attractive, uh, yeah. uh, um, attractive uh, a proposal to any startup. No? The guys from Hilti and Sangoban might have different priorities than me or, or the construction business like Ferrovial and Vinci, they have different priorities. So, so at the end of the day, out of the 600 startups that we get every year, easily 300, 400 of them have some sort of interest and certainly hundreds and hundreds of them have meaningful discussion with any of the, of the partners and, and sometimes with all of the partners. No? So 
it's it's not only a competition which provides the opportunity to connect with corporates to the startups uh, for those which actually are prioritized within the 10 20 40 uh, finalists they actually have a lot of contact with a wider world of potential investors yes i think you you mentioned the right point that is the the opportunity of um, collaboration between uh, different corporates yeah. you know, while engaging startups sometimes also with competitors of company of the same yeah. industry and uh, again this is the same uh, logic that is behind our scale up summit that is a format that we've been using in the past few years so the idea of bringing a large number of corporates uh, meeting a large volume of startups yeah. with the principle that for a startup is more attractive uh, to, yeah. to come to a place when there is not just a single counterpart, but potential yeah. many partners. And again, this is, makes a lot of sense, but still some corporates are a bit reluctant to hear, and particularly they have some uh, sort of uh, vetoes, you know, if I'm here and that my competitor cannot be here. Also, even if there may be a problem of uh, someone that is stealing innovation and that actually this is not the case i think uh, one of the problems that typically corporates do have is they move slow and so again if you really want to do something you have all the opportunities to do it most of the exactly. time you are creating your own barriers your own roadblocks to to complete the collaboration how do you see that well um look uh one of the reasons, I mean, we, we tend to be very open in some ventures. I mean, open innovation is really about finding the right concepts and uh, partnering with as many people as, as possible. No, uh, We have put a lot of effort in really creating partnerships, even with competitors as possible. Uh, it's, it's one of the few areas in which you can talk actually meaningful about innovation without risk of falling into the traps of legalities and so on. No? Of course, we follow the rules as much as possible. No, But but uh, today we have hundreds of partnerships to go all the way from a written paper with 10 bullet points. That this says this is the way we're going to interact all the way to just we agreed to meet every quarter and once a quarter we drop a line. OK, let's meet Thursday. No, And we do this with other people, people in the industry, contractors, other building materials producers, uh, with all sorts of venture capitalists, um, universities, uh, technicals. I mean, it's it's the only way that you can actually make sure that you are number one, up to speed of what is happening. And number two is uh, making sure that what you are looking is right on the spot, no? And, 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 and leverage the knowledge of what is happening all around, no? Um, so, uh, we we are fairly open to actually in, in our day-to-day -day, uh, open innovation schedule. No? Yeah. Uh, another question is uh, regarding um, your your activity as a CVC. Again, one of the typical billion-dollar questions that I ask is, uh, what's the goal? What's the main goal of a CVC? Is it strategic or is it financial? No, for... Well... As, as it's a tricky say, question, so because no, it's a tricky question. But as many people say, that there's no better strategy than the one that makes money, no. Uh, so, yes, we are trying to solve a strategic issue and, and help CEMEX achieve strategic objectives. Uh, but we don't fool ourselves, and I know that one day the final judgment will come and people will tell me, okay, we gave you X amount of million dollars. I mean, give me back uh, X plus, no? Uh, having said that, we don't not only measure the efficiency of, of our portfolio investments, which so far I know that we've been lucky in certain cases. We, in some other cases, we've chosen the right concepts. So, so far our, the, the return on our investment is, 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 is actually there. And actually, we had, for example, this year, even we were part one of our, our portfolio companies went into a SPAC, so that, that will settle a lot of our of our profitability issues, no? But 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 we also measure other things, no? For example, uh, one of the early things that we measure is how is Semex Ventures changing the mindset of the way we think about strategy. And we did an actual effort to, and, and, and a lot of interviews with a lot of executives, top executives, the company to actually go and tell them, I mean, you send me there, 
to figure out what is happening and come back to you to help you think differently about the future of the company. Please give me an assessment of how bad or how good I did it, no? Uh, and, 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 we, and we went into certain uh, KPIs, you can mention it, but, but measurements like how we change the conversation about strategy, uh, how many new topics are we really evaluating, whether it's worth for CEMEX, no? Uh, being part of, uh, and so on, no? And, and that was important for us at that moment, no? Uh, today, for example, uh, decarbonization is a good one. I mean, is uh, those are technologies that will be mature in five, four, five years. Okay, but we're measuring, I mean, out of those technologies, in, with how many are we having an industrial pilot today or the potential for industrial pilot today, no? So that technology will actually help CEMEX solve a problem of carbon footprint in six years, but today, we need to know whether that technology, we're testing it and whether it will be viable commercially or not, no? So, yes, at some point, if I invest X amount of dollars, somebody will ask me for the return, but we're not only measuring that, no? And, and it's a little bit liquid. Sometimes we invent ourselves self-fulfilling prophecies of, yes, we're doing the great, great job for selling, no? But, well, it happens, no? No, I think you, you touched a very, very good point that is, uh, again, at the end, we all measure by financial return. But at the end, if you are running a CVC and you will be measured only by financial return, the final journey will not be that positive yeah. because, again, whatever spectacular result you may achieve, they are not material for the PL of a company like yeah. CMEX. And that is a, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to waste yeah, yeah. money or throw money out of the window. Exactly. That is not the case. But the, the other, real value of a CBC is to provide a, a strategic, an influence of the strategy of the company, the one that you mentioned, because you are providing insights. You are, you are opening a window of the future on horizon two, on yeah. horizon three. And ter theoretically speaking, you might, you are successful if you help them to, to change their strategic mindset, to change their strategies, to impact on their strategies. The problem, and this is discussion having a lot of uh, managing partners of me at many CVCs, is how to measure this this kind of contribution because this kind of contribution does exist, but is very very uh, difficult to be to yeah. be measured, to be tracked. Yeah, and so you are mentioning that you're using some KPIs. You made an example of decarbonization. Okay, how many industrial pilots have been started? So we were yeah. starting showing you some interesting innovation in this area, and then. As a consequence, the company started to do some actions. Which kind of KPIs do you use, or you might suggest, or you're considering? Because this is crucial. Because, well, um, as you mentioned, it's 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 very hard to come up with a hard I know, KPI. That's why I'm asking. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you catch me on that one. Now, um, look, um, one good example. Uh, I just gave the example of decarbonization. No, I mean it's it's really. How many technologies are we actually testing, and 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 the and, and the and the status on each? No? That that's something we measure. No? But for example, that's that's another strategic objective on uh, the growth of the company. No? And as the growth of the company, we understand that the world will change, and potentially we stick to the traditional businesses as they are in cement, ready mix, and aggregates. We might not be growing at the pace we want to grow five, 10 years down the road. No? So we know that we need to open new business opportunities, new business services or products. No? So one measure we have in that area is how much of those new opportunities that we're evaluating are we brought by CEMEX Ventures? No? Uh, and, how in, and which one of those are actually being really considered and piloted? Uh, in a way, what we are ended up doing is, for many cases, even if it's not something that came up from CEMEX Ventures, we use CEMEX Ventures actually to the laboratory to test new businesses. No? So if, if, if something is going to go wrong, it goes wrong in a small scale. No? But in that case, it, I'm also measured by, about uh, how many new businesses are you bringing it to us? No? And, and how many of those are actual businesses we're interested in? And him and those, those are many businesses which, which we will pilot. No? Uh, so it's no, it's no financial number in there because at the end of the day, many of those are, are bets. 
uh, today, but two, three years down the road, if the bet is still there, somebody will come and tell me, okay, give me the numbers right now, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is an evolution, no? And it goes case by case, really. Uh, but at the end of the day, if, if I sit down at the end of the year with with the CEO of Semex and, and he's going to give me an evaluation is, how's your portfolio looking in terms of financial return? I know that many of those investments are still uh, nominal values, but okay, it's, yeah. it's alive. It's a, the, the, the healthiness of the portfolio. Uh, and okay, strategic priority one, two, three, and four, what are you doing here? And what's the benefit? The, not the monetary benefit, but the, the other tangible benefits that you're bringing to the table, no? How many technologies of, the car, of carbon capture have you brought in? How many are in which stage? Uh, how many new businesses have you proposed? And which one of many are we uh, piloting? Uh, uh, how many digital solutions have you tested in our commercial area and things like that, no? I mean, how much are you influencing what Semex is doing in new in the market, no? And it's at some point is it's, it's a perception assessment, no? Because it's gonna be his opinion as well, no? In some in some cases, you simply cannot put numbers, no? Yes, and particularly if you are really doing your job, that is mostly investing in uh, Horizon Two and Horizon Three rather than Horizon One. Yeah. By definition, it's also difficult that this kind of bets might yeah. have an internal validation in the short term. Because exactly. they might have some internal validation yeah. in five to ten years from now. In, in, in fact, there's some investments that many of my colleagues say Gonzalo must be getting crazy. I mean, why the hell are we investing in that? The problem is that probably I'm, I'm thinking about Horizon three, two and three, and and they think in, in Horizon one, no? And and and, and the day to day doesn't allow them to stop and think, no? Yes. Uh... Last question is, you mentioned the program of entrepreneurship that you have run in the past few years with some results. Uh, might be interesting to, to get your, your insights in terms of what it worked, what it didn't, how you are planning to restructure it, uh, uh, some, some recommendation to other companies that are running a similar programs so or they are about to launch them. What are your takeaways here? Look, I, I think that when we when we launch entrepreneurship or, or these initiatives, these incubations, I think we the first one we we struggle a little bit in actually finding the the, the minimum viable product, the, the concept, and so on. We got much better for the second and third time. We actually managed to do that very quickly. No, where we really struggled is in really moving from the pilot to creating the startup, in the actual administrative and um, the administrative and, and, and governance framework. This is one which mm -hmm. I really think we, we, we screw it up. Uh, we struggle a lot to make the administration areas of Semex understand that these are businesses which are different and has to be and they have to be managed differently. We fail there miserably. Yeah, uh, because you, your plan was to create separate entities. Participated exactly. by Semex. Exactly. And you give some equity to the originators. That's something we screwed up as well at the beginning. So, what are we going gonna do moving forward? And we're gonna give a lot of incentives to the. I, th I think in order to be successful in these things, you need to do three or four things right. You need to give the right invest incentive to the entrepreneurs. You need to really have an entrepreneur who treats an entrepreneur, and sometimes that guy is not inside the company. You need to find it outside. Yes. Uh, you need to leverage the unfair advantage of being part of Cenex. Not leverage the administrative matters of Cenex. The leverage <laughs> the, unfair of bad, the, the unfair advantage, meaning if you're going to put a software which help you uh, manage supply chain, Cenex should be one of your key clients. But not your. You, they should not see you as an additional functionality of my system. I'm, I'm, I'm a service provider, no? Uh, and and you need to give them freedom, freedom to run. Yeah, the, the solution we're seeing on the market, at least for the few companies that are launching, they're spinning out companies to create a sort of sandbox where this yep. company, yes, need to observe the overall policies of the uh, company they uh, they come from, but still they don't have observed all the rules, all the 
policies yeah. of the compliance because that's definitely might, might kill them because at the end you say you should leverage the unfair advantage if not you are you are being killed by the unfair disadvantage of being part of a large organization yeah. because you have a small organization moving at the same speed of the large exactly. and so this is not exactly what you're planning to have a speedboat if you put the same rules of a tanker probably it doesn't uh, doesn't go that far yeah, exactly perfect so uh gonzalo i think has been a great conversation uh, again congratulations for all the work that you guys have been doing we'll definitely keep a closer eyes uh, as we've been done in the past few years by the way but we continue to keep a close eyes on what you guys are doing and particularly let's uh schedule a uh, I'll catch up in uh, in the subsequent months uh, also to sure. understand what are your progress, what you've sure. been learning down the way, and what new you're up to. Thank yes, you. And the ever changing uh, world of innovation. Exactly. The only rule is that if you continue to do what you've been doing, something you is will, wrong. you will die. Exactly. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gonzalo. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.